Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a CUBE conversation at SiliconANGLE's Palo Alto studio. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest and new to Nutanix, the Chief Marketing Officer, Ben Gibson. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Stu, thanks for having me here. I love the studio and love the chance to chat with you. All right, so our audience knows Nutanix really well, so let, let's inter introduce them to you first of all. G yeah. Give our audience a little bit about you know, your background and you know, we know Nutanix. IPO'd not that long ago, yep. exciting, growing real fast, so you know, I I'm sure it makes sense, but, but, what, but why for Ben? Yeah, for me, first and foremost, it's such an exciting company. Uh, we're going through a lot of really strong growth right now. We've really created a category in the space around hyperconvergence, and now we're really expanding from that position. And to be in the middle of that, I think is really exciting. Yeah. Um, so your, your background is mostly in the networking space, and it's one of those things, I'm a networking guy by background. Yeah. Networking's been changing a lot lately, but not nearly as fast as some of the other parts. So, you know, what, what, what's, tell us a little bit about your background, where you've been, what, what your skill set's going to bring to Nutanix and that ecosystem. Yeah, you know, I did. Like you, I hailed from the networking industry. I spent a good portion of my career at Cisco. Uh, I spent part of my career at Aruba Networks, which is in the uh, Wi-Fi wireless space. Uh, and, but I think you're right. I think the acceleration of innovation in Nutanix's industry, a lot of stuff has changed so quickly in that space and networking hasn't quite kept up with that level of change of things. And then for me, it's kind of getting on a much faster train and moving forward with it. All right, so we've had theCUBE at every single one of the, the .next conferences. Thank you. Uh, they're, they're fun. Uh, your predecessor, Howard Ting, had a certain flair, so uh, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about the show, and you know, are there things you're going to be putting your, your, your stamp on at, at this show coming up in New Orleans? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's great to succeed Howard in the role. I used to be advisor for the company, and so Howard and I used to have periodic pancake breakfast, and I told him what I thought, and he shared with me a lot about how exciting things were what was happening at Nutanix and how they really move forward. And I knew about .next, I've seen .next, I know what an exciting show it is. For a company like Nutanix to draw this year over 5,000 attendees to this show, that's notable. And what to me that signals is the level of intensity and the level of loyalty that we enjoy in our customer base. They're believers and they're coming to the show to learn from us, to connect with each other, and really to accelerate some of their plans on how they continue to innovate. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we, we try, travel to so many different shows, and absolutely, it is at its core, it's a user conference, it's users there wanting to learn how to use what they have even better, learn about the cool net technologies. Um, you know, Dave Vellante and I have talked about, Nutanix is up there with companies like ServiceNow that have just mm -hmm. people that come um, and are just, you know, kind of fanatically support it. It reminds me of, uh, you know, while VMware is a great company and doing well today, many years ago, everybody had the I love VMware bumper stickers, mm -hmm. um, uh, VMworld's a great show, we'll be there this year, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and so I know you, your company will too. So, uh, what what do people, what brings them to that show from your standpoint, and uh, it gives a little insight as to kind of some of the special things they'll be seeing this year in New Orleans. Yeah, you know, I think one of the biggest attractions of coming to this show is if you think about the role of an infrastructure professional, someone who's looking at hybrid cloud environments and how do you manage those, uh, thinking about what applications run on what cloud platform, there's a lot of change and fluidity to that. And I think the nature of the role of an IT or an infrastructure professional is changing. Server storage admin is quickly evolving because that's converging, just like the technology has. And so, for me, this show is about how do you get ahead of those trends? How do you position yourself to be as strategic as possible within your own organization? And that's the way I like to think of .next. It's a place that a professional can come to learn and to grow their career and their technology expertise. Yeah, it's a great point. One of the things I've loved on theCUBE is there are speakers that aren't just from the tech industry. So uh, everyone from Deepak Malhotra, who is uh, fr from Harvard, um, you know, thought leaders in the space yeah. to uh, on stage at one of the shows, it was David Blaine doing a magic trick while <laughs> uh, uh, one, one of your engineers was, was configuring stuff. So um, there's some great speakers that'll be at the event this year to not only learn the tech, but as you said, you're thinking about the person's career and how do they embrace change and how do they help become more valuable to their company. Yeah, yeah you know there's two in particular that are going to be joined this year that I'm very excited about. One's Dr. Brene Brown, and if you haven't seen her uh, TED Talk on YouTube, I highly recommend you go and check it out. Uh, it's, a, it's something different, it's about how do you be vulnerable 
with yourself, with your career, how you take chances, how do you take risk? And that's a lot of what's going on in our industry right now. Uh, the second one I think is to be really fun, and that's Anthony Bourdain, uh, known for his show from Parts Unknown. Uh, and he's going to have colorful language, right? Noted, some colorful language, but also he's just a riot. He's someone I think is going to bring his special kind of flair to the show and get everyone really excited, laughing, and maybe a little bit of gasping in terms of uh, what he's going to be sharing with us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, New Orleans is a great culinary de destination, Indeed. so I, I know everybody that's going there, you want to check out the music, the culture, and a lot going in there. All right, so excited about the show. We're going to have uh, the, the Cube there for two days. Uh, last thing I want to talk to you about, Ben, yeah. just Nutanix as a company. Uh, when I registered for the show, uh, there was one of the questions that I thought was pretty interesting. They said, what do you think Nutanix is? You know, how do you, what's your relationship with Nutanix? Um, and I'm trying to remember. I know one of the options was, uh, M is, is Nutanix a hyper-converged infrastructure player? Mm -hmm. Are they a cloud player? I think storage might even be in there. Um, it's been one of those things as to, you know, well, who is Nutanix? What are you today and, and, and what do you want to be uh, in the next phase of growth? You know, it's a great question, Stu. Who is Nutanix? We are focused on helping our customers build their enterprise cloud. Our taglines could be your enterprise cloud. Enterprise cloud is not only how you modernize your own data center, but it's also how do you embrace, how do you have a strategy, how do you govern, how do you bring together the right workload for the right cloud, cloud platform at the right time. And that's the direction we're taking with our innovation. This is what more and more of our customers are looking to do. Not every application's going to a public cloud provider, not every application staying on premise. We're going to be living in this hybrid world Enterprise cloud is about how do you take the ingredients of hyperconverged infrastructure, take the ingredients of, of automation and management over these different workloads across these different environments, and do so in a way that makes the complexity of infrastructure and multiple cloud management, make that all invisible. So for us, that's our mission. It's building that enterprise cloud and making all that complexity go away. And that's the vision we're going to be talking about. And that's what we think our attendees are really looking to get the guidance and kind of the vision of how they move their careers for, forward and flourish in yeah, that ben, space. Yeah, Ben, it's the barometer I've been using for probably the last two years. If I, they spend a lot more time in kind of the DevOps cloud native uh, you know, worlds these days. Uh, we were at a, an Amazon summit yesterday, but Absolutely, it's a heterogeneous world. IT is never, you know, let's throw out the old and start from new. Sure, yeah. there's some new companies that, that might do that, but it's a heterogeneous world, it's a multi-cloud world, and big struggle for people is how do they get their arms around it? So, if I look at a company that has started mostly on-premises, it's like, how, how are you evolving? How are you working with the public cloud? Uh, you know, Nutanix has been working very closely with Google over the last year or so, yeah. uh, and you had an acquisition uh, recently that, that I know plays into this whole story. So, maybe tell us a little bit about the acquisition and you know, right, how, does, how does Nutanix look at itself, which is now, I mean, if you read the Wall Street reports, Nutanix is a software company, mm -hmm. and you're getting great multiples on that, and it's helping, and you know, I, I've been pretty vocal on this from its early days, is you know, Nutanix was never a hardware company. It, it, you know, building an appliance was a go-to-market choice to simplify and make it easy for customers, but as the company matured, uh, it, yeah. it made a lot more options, and today it makes perfect sense that really software is is where it goes. So, you know, let's, it talked about a bunch of things there, but specifically yeah. kind of the multi-cloud and the acquisition first. Yeah, you know, Stu, we're really excited about this recent acquisition we made. It's a company called Minjar, and the offering is essentially it's going to be integrated into our broader software platform that allows customers to be able to assess on a real-time basis what's the right cloud platform for a particular workload from a costing perspective, from a reliability standpoint. Deerish talks about the laws of the land, the laws of physics and the like. You need to apply these all to determine what you're going to run where. And what we got with this Minjar acquisition is a really sophisticated way that our customers can embrace as part of their enterprise cloud. Because part of this is taking back control over all this uh, disaggregation of workloads running everywhere. You're losing control, losing governance of your data and your applications if you don't really keep on top of it. This acquisition, I believe, is going to be a really key part of helping IT organizations regain that control, yet still enjoy all the benefits of hybrid cloud environments, whether it be with an AWS, an Azure, a Google Cloud platform, like we're partnering very closely with, as well as what they're building with their enterprise cloud on-premise, uh, whether it be you know, with Nutanix. 
Yeah, it reminds me of uh, what was it? Progressive Insurance, I think, has you know the yeah. you know we're going to give you quotes on all of the things there. Uh, cloud is complicated these days. Uh, is there bias towards it pushing towards you know Nutanix closer partners and the technology itself? Yeah, I mean it certainly has. There's a lot of complexity around that, and to me, the industry hasn't solved a lot of new complexity that has come out of the emerging trend of a different line of business starting to develop a new application out in a certain cloud platform and the like. And as you're seeing this demand for more application mobility between clouds, and so all of a sudden the partners that are coming to us and the partners we're seeing and are demanded of that we work with in the market are players that are looking at application automation, players that are looking at DevOps tools and the like, and it both guides how we innovate on our Calm platform, which we introduced last year at .next, as well it helps us expand our reach. So we talk to our traditional buyers, but there's a lot of new buyers now that are building those apps, managing those environments, and we're going to start to see some of those come into the .next show. All right, uh, Ben, want to give you the final word. Uh, .next is just one of the many events. Uh, I know you do lots of regional shows and the like. Uh, what should we expect to see uh, from Nutanix uh, through 2018? Yeah, you know, the first thing is the, the dialogue, the narrative for the company that we're going out with. We've moved to be a software only company. And I think our customers tell us, and I heard this from one of our largest retail industry customers just a few weeks ago, by moving to a software only model, it's given them freedom to take advantage of Nutanix regardless of their hardware platforms. And, and like you said, we've never been a hardware company, it's all been about software value. And what you're going to see from us is a new narrative, an expansion of the brand of Nutanix, talking about the freedom we give for customers to build the data center they've always wanted to build. Freedom to run the application or the workload that they've wanted to run where they choose to run it, based on that insight I talked about. Uh, and in another realm, a freedom to play, freedom to get their weekends back. And a lot of our value proposition, because of all the complexity we've taken out of the equation, is we give our customers their weekends back. This is a story that our .next attendees, I think, know better than others, but we want to spread the word. And so part of that is harnessing that freedom concept to build, to run, to play, to invent, and tell the world. And .next, whether it be in New Orleans, which I think is going to be a blast, uh, when we take it to Europe, in London, and then we do this all around the world, to me that's kind of ground zero for uh, that story, for the community of what we built together with our customers and partners, and that's what we take out to the world. All right, well Ben Gibson, glad we could introduce you to our community uh, today because we're going to be seeing you at lots of other events, uh, you and your team. Of course, the Cube will be at Nutanix.next in New Orleans. Uh, Nutanix and you will be at the Dell Technologies World in, in Las Vegas. Uh, Google Cloud Next uh, happening this summer in, in San Francisco. Lots of other shows, so be sure to tune in to thecube.net get the list of all the upcoming shows, Ben, Nutanix, and of course, lots of the cloud and infrastructure ecosystem. Check it all out. I'm Stu Miniman, thanks for watching theCUBE.